Funding for this channel is provided by viewers like you. Thank you. What's up, punks? If by any chance you didn't already know, hi, my name is Allie. I'm 27 years old. I moved to Belgium when I was 21 to marry my now husband, and I've been here ever since just trying to figure out my life. And as of right now, my full-time job is reading and making videos on the internet.com. So, very grateful, very lucky, very happy with where I'm currently at. Today, we are sat in front of my bookshelf with 16 new books that I acquired across two weeks with three different friends, three different cities, across seven different bookshops. Some of these are specific books that I had on a list that I was on the hunt for, but also there was an overall theme of looking for books for Women in Translation Month, but also lately I've been craving stories with strong female friendships. So a lot of these books fall under those categories, some of them don't. We're gonna talk about them all. However, if by any chance you are looking to experience a gripping cliffhanger for free, then look no further. Because my friend Mish recently dropped her first webcomic. If you've been here since I was a literal child, there is a good chance you remember Mish. <laughs> Her first webtoon, Sleep, is online now. It follows a young woman named Remy who suffers from unspecified sleep issues, and she's starting to lose her grip on what's reality and what's fiction. There's a cat. There is super cute art, also quite spooky art that made me a little bit scared. I'm a baby, though, but I was a scared baby. And most importantly, it's technically enrolled in a contest right now, so it would mean the world to us. If you signed up for webtoon.com, which is a website that's chock full of free content made by extremely talented people, it's where Heartstopper started. Hello. So you'd only be doing yourself a service in signing up, but you'd be doing us a big favor if you gave this webcomic a like, gave Misha a follow, just send her some love. I've linked it down below. Also, there are only two weeks left to pre-order the summer snail t-shirts. I designed them myself, inspired by my love for snails and my recent autism diagnosis. These shirts are a gentle reminder that we all don't have to live on the same timeline. We can take life at our own individual pieces. They come in two colors, the white going up to a 5XL. 10% of the proceeds go to the Autistic Women and Non-Binary Network. Support the channel and a good cause and do something nice for yourself if you feel so inclined. Thank you for listening to today's announcement. Before diving into the halls, let's talk book crawls. What's a book crawl, you may ask? It's basically a bar crawl, you know, with the same essence of bouncing from bar to bar, trying all their different drinks, having a fun time, but replace bar with books. You bop between different book shops and shop till you drop, essentially. The first person I went on a book crawl with was my booktube friend Kirsty. We've been friends for a little over a year now. And finally, for the first time in our friendship, we were able to hang out. She flew in from Ireland and spent roughly four days here. We originally intended on sitting down and making book content together, but we just fell into too much friendship fun and it didn't happen. Happen. And I'm glad it didn't because that's just the way the wind took us <laughs> But it would be a crime for this reunion to take place and have no found footage So I found the footage I've compiled it together and without further ado here is me and Kirsty Solidifying our friendship into the real world and book crawling through both Brussels and Lurban Why didn't we film any videos together? Because we dumb. Because <laughs> we dumb. <laughs> 
Oh, my heart. <laughs> the second book crawl was with my friends, Alex and Abel. We spent an entire day perusing shops in Ghent. And so now that we saw the adventures, let's take a peek at the 16 books that I found. Also, I'm often asked where I find English books in Belgium, so I will be covering the locations, do not worry. First, I'd like to go over the books that I found with Kirsty. These were acquired through Brussels and Leuven. In Brussels, we visited Passaporta and Waterstones, Passaporta being the independent option of the two. And it has such a special place in my heart because it's where I found Lonely Castle and the Mirror on a Whim, which is my favorite book of all time. And in Leuven, we went to Bucharest, which is a small independent bookshop on the Ludoza Plain. We also went to Dyslecta, which has used books. They have a few of those in Belgium. And then of course there's also always Fnac or Standard Book Handle, which are definitely more popular, bigger chain type businesses. But as far as I'm aware, it's still better than Amazon. So these are the two books that I got in Leuven with Kirsty. The first book being Chouette by Claire Oshetsky. This is a magical realism literary fiction. It's technically a book about motherhood, except the mother in this book is pregnant, not with a human, but with an owl, baby, question mark. This book claims to be a darkly funny and unsettling exploration of ambition, sacrifice, and the perceptions of ability. Extremely unsure of what to expect here, but completely sold by the cover and the concept. Kirsty and I both got this one, so we'll be most likely reading it together. I'm really excited. And the second Lerman find was Heaven by Miku Kawakami. As some of you may know, if you watched my most recent reading review, the most recent book to make it to my favorite shelf was Miss Ice Sandwich by Miku Kawakami. All of Kawakami's work has been translated from Japanese, and this one is a coming-of-age story about a 14-year-old relentlessly bullied. I've heard that it's horrendously sad, but I've just had such a beautiful time with my first Kawakami. So I'm just really looking forward to reading everything else that they have to offer. <laughs> the stack of books that I found in Brussels are so aesthetically pleasing. They all go together so well. This is so satisfying for my little rat brain. It scratches a very special place in my cranium. The first book in the stack is Moth by Melody Razek. I've never heard anything about this book before. I was just drawn to it at the bookshop. And then every time I opened it to read a random sentence, I was extremely impressed with the writing style. So no brainer. <laughs> this is a historical fiction saga, technically, that follows one Indian family's trials and tribulations through the partition split of Pakistan from India. Online, it's also set under the mental health category, so I'm just endlessly intrigued at what this book has in store. Up next is This One Summer by Mariko Tamaki and Jillian Tamaki. But this is a realistic fiction graphic novel that follows two girls who are best friends. One friend begins to face familial complications, and so when the two of them naturally try to find some kind of reprieve, some kind of escape, they open a whole new box of problems. I'm already so impressed with the art style and the color palette that was chosen. I just think this is going to be such a nice read for the month as I wrap up my own summer. I've had this on my radar for a little bit. It's very satisfying to finally have it in my hands. Next, I Want to Die But I Want to Eat Taboki by Beck Sahi. This is a short memoir centered around psychology and mental health. The back says, why are we so bad at being honest about our feelings? Is it because we're so exhausted from living that we don't have the time to share them? Apparently it records conversations that our author had with their own doctor across a 12 week period. Of course the title drew me in from the get go. And I think I've thought this very same thought several times in my life. So I'm really looking forward to it. Also this was translated from Korean. So this could work for women in translation month too. Next, we had to remove this post by Hannah Bravutz. This is a queer short horror fiction that's translated from Dutch. It's about our protagonist who takes a job as a content moderator for social media, which is one of the most psychologically damaging jobs that you could find today. And this was recommended to me by a TikTok that said, read this if you want to delete all of your accounts. So needless to say, I am frightened. And the final book that I found with Kirsty is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin, otherwise known as Tomorrow Times Three. <laughs> Back of the book says this is not a romance, but it is about love, which is such an elevator pitch to me. And it also says that two kids meet in a 
hospital gaming room in 1987. One is visiting her sister, the other is recovering from a car crash. So this book follows two friends from childhood to adulthood. Apparently they design a game together. Apparently the descriptions are amazing. Louise or Constellate here on YouTube said that this was a five-star book, one of her favorite reads of July, and I trust my fellow Summer Splashers. It just sounds like the character connections in this one are so strongly written, which is something that I've been craving, as I said. And there's just so much hype for this one online, but it really feels like it's deserved. So sign me up. I'm jumping on the bandwagon. I'm excited. So this stack is the consequence of my first book crawl with Kirsty. Thank you so much for coming, my friend. She'll be linked down below. You can see the little video she made of the clips that she took. And so now we will go over the nine books that I found in Ghent with my friend Alex and Abel. In Ghent, we went to a few places. Ghent is my favorite city in Belgium so far. It's where I get all my tattoos. They have great food and their bookshops are unmatched in my opinion. My favorite one ever that I found in Belgium is called Pard Van Troja. Being English speaking and looking for English language books in a country where that's not one of their national languages proves to be quite a challenge. It's usually pretty slim pickings for books. But Pard Van Troja had such a wide collection of newer releases, popular books, and ones that I've never heard before but really piqued my interest. It was such a fun place to be. I can't wait to go again. We also went to Bukhan de Limerick, which is technically also an independent bookstore. It was very cozy. There were some great choices in there as well. And then of course in Ghent, they also have a standard book handle and a FNAC, which have English options. Anyway, there are nine books that I found in Ghent. Let's talk about them. The first is Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung. This is a collection of short stories. It was translated from Korean. So again, women in translation book option. They span from fantasy to sci-fi to horror to magical realism. Apparently it addresses the cruelties of the patriarchy and capitalism, which is right in my wheelhouse. I've honestly just heard nothing but good things about this one, but the opening lines, she was about to flush the toilet. Mother? Question mark. So good. I'm really looking forward to this one. Also just look at how exquisite. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. Next, The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. This is a sci-fi dystopic fantasy that was translated from Japanese, so once again, you know what to do. The concept is kind of confusing for me as someone who hasn't read the book, so I will try to do it justice because it is so interesting. Apparently, it takes place on an island, and from my understanding, every day, certain things will randomly be missing. So for example, one day you'll wake up and all your socks will be gone, and you will also have no memories of what a sock is. But the few that do by any chance remember what a sock is, live in fear of the draconian memory police, whose goal is to ensure that what has disappeared remains forgotten. Why? I'm not certain, but I am excited to find out. <laughs> Such a unique concept. Sign me up. Next, I picked up Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. This is a YA fantasy apparently retelling about a princess named Shiori that has forbidden magic. But then unfortunately during her unwanted betrothal ceremony, she loses control of said magic and reveals herself. So that as punishment, she becomes banished and her brothers are transformed into cranes question mark and then apparently to restore a life to some sense of normalcy for our protagonist she has to join forces with the boy that she fought so hard to not be married to another one of those books that I've heard nothing but good things about can we talk about how gorgeous ah! are you kidding me and the second one is just as pretty I'm so looking forward to it I really hope I like this one but I have nothing but high hopes because the first lines are the bottom of the lake tasted like mud salt and regret the water was so thick it was agony keeping my eyes open but thank the great gods I did otherwise I would have missed the dragon what? Intrigue. Immediately. <laughs> Next. Sula by Toni Morrison. Now Toni Morrison was an American author and professor who won a Nobel Prize for Literature. According to theinternet.com, she is well known for her epic themes, vivid dialogue, and depictions of African American characters. Her work is iconic and powerful, and somehow I have not read anything by Morrison yet. I have two of her other books, Beloved and Vicissitive, but this one I had to pick up because I heard about it in an episode of Bingetopia, which is my favorite podcast, and Eliza and Julia said that it featured strong female friendships. You understand. You understand. Stand. And along that same vein, I also found The Inseparables by Simone de Beauvoir. I don't speak French, I'm so sorry. But Simone was a French author and philosopher. She wrote about political and social issues. And this book wasn't published until recently, after Beauvoir's death, which is very unfortunate, seeing as the themes it contains could have been so helpful for its time. It's a translated novel from 1954 about two female friends who become close and have deep conversations about justice and war and religion, and they kind of build a world of their own. So not only is this a great choice for Women in Translation Month, but it fits that craving that I currently have of wanting girl connections. So, feminist fiction, classic, queer, you can't lose. I've got high hopes. 
Next, Companion Piece by Ali Smith. Apparently this one illustrates the COVID, post-COVID sort of limbo that we've been experiencing, and as the title suggests, it's a celebration of companionship. Hello. The synopsis doesn't give me much else. However, I don't know if y'all have seen, but Ali Smith has four books, each named after a season, and they all look so beautiful together, and I've been so tempted for months to just scoop up all four of them, but that would not be a very responsible financial decision. So I figured that this would be a great introductory to Ali Smith's writing, see if I like it and if I do I'll pick up the other four. That can be fun. I splurged on this one because the cover. Look at it. Are you kidding me? The cover that I always see looks like this which is quite nice as well but when I saw this one at Book Kind of Limerick I was immediately sold. You understand. Next! The Black Unicorn by Audre Lorde. Lorde is a revolutionary black feminist who is particularly active in the civil rights movement and is most well known for her poetry. I'm not a big poetry person but I really want to be so I've been trying to branch out and dip my toes into different poetry lands. So I picked up Baby's First Audre Lorde. Apparently this is her most acclaimed collection and it features poems that explore life as a black woman, as a mother, as a daughter, as a lesbian, through both healing and lucidity. The back of my copy says, I have been woman for a long time. Beware my smile. I am treacherous with old magic. I am truly prepared to transform into a hot girl, smart girl, big brain poetry person. The next book I have heard nothing about. I don't know if I'm just in the shadows or what, but I'm happy that I know about it now and it is. Tomb of Sand by Gitanjali Shri. This is translated from Hindi. It's written by an Indian author. It follows an 80-year-old woman who slips into a deep depression after the death of her husband, but then she strikes up a friendship with a trans woman and the two of them go to visit Pakistan as they both confront unresolved traumas that planted themselves in the both of them during the partition. The writing. Are you kidding me? I hadn't heard anything about this before seeing it at the shop and then I turned to the first page and it says a particular tale has a border and women who come and go as they please. Once you've got women and a border, a story can write itself. Even women on their own are enough. Women are stories in themselves, full of stirrings and whisperings that float on the wind that bend with each blade of grass. And it's almost 800 pages of writing like that. Are you, what? <laughs> this is a challenge I accept with open arms and an open mind. And the last book of this haul that I found in Ghent is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. This is a lesbian horror story that features a deep sea mission. Our protagonist Miri believes that she got her wife back after some kind of ocean adventure of sorts. But the Leah that she receives is not quite right. Whatever that means. This is Armfield's debut novel and everyone that I know that has read this book was thoroughly impressed. The concept is so unique and gripping as is. It's on the shorter side, so it's a little bit low pressure. I'm pretty freaked out by open water. Are you? <laughs> I'm ready to be chilled, thrilled, and afraid. <laughs> so there you have it. The 16 books that I bought with my friends on two book crawls, none of which are written by men. Nice. I don't even think that was intentional. It just happened. The way God intended, truly. I am so, so, so lucky to have friends who share a passion for books like I do. If I could go back in time and tell little Allie that she would be prancing around a European country that she's called home for six years now with fellow-minded friends in bookshops, she would be absolutely elated. Truly living the dream. So naturally, please allow me to give y'all the biggest, loudest, never-ending, screeching thank you for supporting this channel each and every day. I don't make any money from YouTube.com. I don't have an AdSense account. I'm not allowed one. We're not bitter. Actually, we're not because I'm very fulfilled and happy with the setup that we have on Patreon right now. It's because of everyone on there that I can call this my job that I'm able to create as often as I do. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Two fast reminders to check out Misha's webcomic Sleep linked at the top of the description down below. And also there are two weeks left to pre-order the Summer Snail t-shirts. I hope you're happy. And as always, thank you for clicking, thank you for caring, and thank you for being nice. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.